Uh, welcome to organic chemistry, but before we get into the core of organic chemistry, you have to recall a few items from 11th grade. Uh, how to draw Lewis dot structure, what was hybridization, and how to decide what is hybridization of specific carbon, the different types of covalent bonds, sigma and pi, and also you should be able to remember intermolecular forces, the forces among the molecules, and in the order of hydrogen bonding stronger than dipole-dipole, stronger than Van der Waals. So first I'm going to elaborate on Lewis dot structure. Uh, as a quick fix, remember carbon should have only four bonds. Hydrogen has one bond. Oxygen will have two bonds and two non-bonding pair of electrons. Nitrogen, on the other hand, will have three bonds and one non-bonding pair. Carbon is the central element, uh, organic chemistry study of carbon family. It has six electrons, but only the four electrons on the valence shell participate. So it's a tetravalent. Uh, it shares and it forms many molecules. For example, if you have methane, it's a compound that is one carbon and four hydrogen. Now, METS is a prefix, and prefix stands for simply number of carbons. And we are going to memorize them up to 10 carbons. The last uh, word in met, which is ain, methane, is the suffix, and it simply says what family you belong to, what organic family. And we are going to study about 10 or 11 of those family. So methane is CH4. According to this, that C should have four bonds and hydrogen one. It is something of this notion, H, H. And then if you really want to give the 3D version of it, a solid wedge is coming out at us. And then finally, a, a sort of a dash wedge is going away from us. So this is methane. Eventually, when I say remember also hybridization, it has one, two, three, four bonding. So it is sp3 hybridized. These are all sigma covalent. The only thing in terms of uh, intermolecular forces this molecule offers is Van der Waals. It's not polar, doesn't have hydrogen bonding. So it only has Van der Waals. Now you should review all this, sort of remember them. Now if you, you have, we have many uh, molecules or functional groups or families that have oxygen in them. So just let's just do H2O, it, water. I'm not getting into organic families, but if we do water, the oxygen has two bonded uh, pair of electrons and two non-bonding pair of electrons. Then again, if we challenge you on hybridization, you should recall even the non-bonding pair of electrons are part of hybridization. So one, two, three, it is S plus P plus P plus P. So it's collection of four sp3 hybridized bonds. Nitrogen, you should remember, will have three bonds and one lone pair. Then again, I go into ammonia rather than organic family. Ammonia is NH3, and it's one lone pair of electron. Hybridization for this is then again sp3. Now, I'm not going to worry about shapes and bond angles, but as a good student, if you go in for seven, make sure you also remember those. Now let's do some examples of uh, organic families and Lewis dot structure. I'm going to go after uh, two me member carbon. So if I give you something like C2H6, I want you to be able to draw the Lewis dot structure for it. So there are two carbons. Carbon should have four attachments or four bonds. So the structure looks like this. Not perfect geometry, but it gets the picture across. So this is C2H6 in a structural formula. The name is, since I have two carbon, the, the prefix is et, 
and the last name is ain because it's it belongs to hydrocarbons alkanes it's also saturated all carbons are single bonds that means saturated if i give you on other hand another molecule such as c2 h4 i'm removing two hydrogens then you are forced to have a double bond to satisfy the number of hydrogens you have so this is structure of the other one the prefix is still et but the last name is in indicating there is a double bond and that makes it uh, unsaturated if I give you another one, uh, C2, and further remove two more hydrogen, then I could have C. Now you have no choice but have a triple bond, which is the maximum covalent bonding. And it goes like this, a linear structure, two carbons, so it's et. But now the last name becomes ein, a tine, so it's a triple bond. These are collectively known as hydrocarbons. We get into it eventually, we get into nomenclature later. What I want you to do is go from a molecular formula to structural formula. Now let's uh, give you some more examples of et with different functional groups. If I give you uh, C2H5OH, it can also be written as CH3CH2OH. Now what you should respect is the first carbon has three hydrogen the fourth attachment of carbon then two hydrogen and then you have a hydroxyl group OH now the lone pairs uh, you have option to show or don't show but this is an alcohol family and it's ethanol O stands for hydroxyl and indicates what functional group or family it belongs to let's just give you another example if i give you ch3 cho now after you play with this structure <coughs> you have no choice but to respect the first carbon with three hydrogen but the second carbon now you only have one hydrogen one oxygen so you have no choice but have a double bond here a single bond for hydrogen i'm going to show lone pairs this time now C carbon has one, two, three, four, which is we respected the rule. Oxygen has two bonded and two non-bonded. Now this is an aldehyde, another functional group, and it's ethanol, AL. So we have to be very careful with the last names and how they're working. Now what you should realize in terms of intermolecular for forces, this one has hydrogen bonding and it changes its physical properties higher boiling point compared to something like this which only has dipole dipole doesn't have hydrogen bonding now let's give another example if i give you something like ch3 cooh now first carbon three hydrogen the second carbon, now I have two oxygens and one hydrogen. One oxygen goes as double bond, and one oxygen goes as single bond attached to hydrogen. Now this indicates you're a functional group known as carboxylic acid, and since you have two carbon, it's a tonoic acid. Now don't uh, panic, I'm not going to expect you should know the names i just want you to be able to produce a decent lewis dot structure now let's just uh, give you another example so if i give you something like ch3 with nitrogen in it nh2 looks like ammonia except one of the hydrogen is ch3 now if you elaborate on this lewis dot structure looks like this the first carbon with three hydrogens then it's attached to nitrogen with two hydrogens and one lone pair of electrons this is related to ammonia and this is known as uh, methylamine because you only have one carbon so this is methylamine 
I meant to give you ethyl amine, it turned into methyl. Finally, let me give you one other uh, possibility. If you have CH3CN and it ends like that, then if you try to do loose dot structure, first carbon, three hydrogens. The second carbon only has a nitrogen, and now you have no choice but produce a triple bond nitrogen and a lone pair here. Now this is a family known as nitrile, and we go after number of carbons too, so this is ethane nitrile or ethyl nitrile. Ethane nitrile. So be able to go from structure to lose that structure, then I sort of feel good that you're ready for beginning of uh, organic chemistry.